Bruce Caesar event. I was a captain in the U.S. Army Reserves. I'm from the Philipp uh, I was from the Vietnam era, and I served my country, I feel, honorably. Thank you for your time, Papa. You're welcome. <laughs>
that really need, or building like that one guy does, he, he supports, uh, I think it's, uh, what's his name? He's on MSNBC, but he gets donations, and what they do with the donations, they build tables and chairs, because these students over in Africa have no tables and chairs to sit on to learn in school. So he raises money, and that's what they do. They, they get the lumber, and they build the tables and chairs for the students to have something to sit on in a school. I think that's extremely honorable. Not only physically, but it affected you mentally. The mental, the stress over there was unbelievable. It, 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 you come back from Vietnam, uh, like I told you, uh, your grandmother's, or it would be your uncle, uh, your great uncle, I should say, uh, infected him because Uncle Lewis was an introvert. He didn't want to talk about it because he'd seen so many things that it would make you sick. I had cousins were like that. Uh, my cousin Wayne, my cousin Kenny. They were great. They were up in Quezon. Quezon and uh, Camp Carroll. And they seen a lot. They seen hell is what they seen. And it affects you mentally. Mentally, it's, it's worse than physical. It, you never get over it. You never get over seeing death all around you all the time. It was just constant. And uh, the only good thing is it did make people bond together. I mean, you bond together so you survive. Otherwise, you don't. And uh, it's a thing that you don't want to go through. You don't want to see again. And Vietnam was bad in, in, in many respects because you didn't have the country behind you. You had too many of the people back here in the homeland against it. So if they're not supporting you, and they're not backing you, it's like you feel like you're all alone. And that's why you see a lot of the guys are all messed up. To this day, they're messed up. They didn't get the proper care when they came back. They weren't respected when they came back. They didn't get the support from the VA like they should for their medical problems. And you've heard of the, the term PSD. That, at one time, they go, oh, it's, like a sissy disease. No, it's a real thing. It happens, it's post-traumatic stress syndrome. It's a real thing. And it affected a lot of people. In World War II, they didn't want to believe in that. They would, uh, dis they would uh, try to discharge you for that because they thought you were cowardice or chicken. But it isn't. Today they find out, psychologically, it messes you up. Yes, I always wanted, I always liked, that was one of my favorite uh, units to belong to, and I always wanted to go air cab. So if I had the opportunity or if I had the need, I would go air cab, definitely. Okay, first cab, a big patch with a black horse in it. It's a big patch, and it's gold, it's got a black horse over here. That's called the first air cab. That's their division. That's the one I would have liked to have been in. There's other ones, but none is as famous as the first air cab. Just like 82nd Airborne was good, 101st is probably known better, Screaming Eagles are known better than 82nd, but there's nothing wrong with the 82nd. They're a good unit. But 101st is what, when you think of Airborne, you think of 101st. There's a lot of opportunity there. You can be cut. Well, I would have liked to have flown a helicopter. There's a lot of opportunity. And it was just the, the camaraderie, the training, and what it stands for. When they were what they call a bad, I can't say the word, but they, uh, <laughs> they were just baddies. Put it that way. When they, come in, when they came into an area, you didn't mess with them. They, they, they don't take prisoners. They come in, they come in to win, or they don't come in at all. That's the thing. They, they're there to win. And when they come in to support somebody, they're going to get supported. And they were just a, the camaraderie and the, the mystique and everything about it. It's still to stay. It's, it's like uh, Green Beret. When you say Green Beret, not everybody can be a Green Beret. Not everybody has another thing I like to win, like the, a Ranger. That would be the ultimate goal. You want to be, you want to be somebody. You want to be a ranger. There's only a couple of ranger battalions, and they are famous, and they are tough. 
They are one tough unit. <laughs> Very tough. Yeah. Well, it went good. It went good, but it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. And the final, like I told you, the final exam was really rough. That's the one where they give you a test where you have to do all the different objectives and you're racing against all your classmates and you're racing against the clock. And you gotta run seven miles during the whole testing period. So you're running along this obstacle course, doing your tests, competing against your fellow classmates and competing against the clock. And then they grade you on the three components. How'd you do? I was in the upper 10%, which made me feel real good. I was honored to be in that class. I had, after basic training, I did chemical warfare, CBR, what they call chemical, biological, and radiological warfare. I did that in Anniston, Alabama, which is the home of chemical warfare. And uh, that was a good learning experience. And you've, you've seen a lot of the stuff that you use. We were exposed to mustard gas, uh, chlorine gas, and, and you learn that your gas mass is your buddy. Because without that, you're in trouble. And uh, we got exposed to pepper gas on the back of a truck. And everybody had to scramble to get their gas mask on, crowded in the truck. And you had to learn to put that gas mask on in a couple of minutes flat where you're in trouble. And then we learned uh, what it is that your chemical mask is your buddy because we were exposed to nerve gas, real live exercise, where we see the animals that were put down because they got touched by the pin of a, uh, well, tip of a pin from nerve gas. And within two minutes, they, no, 90 seconds, they were dead. And you've seen all the violent, uh, shakes and twists and turns and convulsions that an animal or a person would go through be exposed to nerve gas. It makes a real believer out of you. It's somewhat terrifying. And uh, you're glad you had a good gas mask. I know that. I would think the British today are treated a lot better than people that served during the Vietnam War. Definitely better. Uh, for one thing, the country is more behind them or stands behind the vets. There's more support. Uh, the veterans' treatment for medical treatment, the veterans' things still needs improvement, but it's better than what it was from the veterans when they returned from Vietnam after being exposed to Agent Orange and all the other crap that they dumped over there. But uh, uh, today, there's, been, there's more, seems to be more support for the troops. I mean, the people are. They may not like a war, but they will stand behind the troops. When in Vietnam, it was terrible. When the country was so divided, nobody, nobody gave a darn about the troops returning. They didn't care when they came back. It was like they didn't exist. And I guess it was like that for the, the soldiers from Korea. They never got a really, they never got a uh, true homecoming feeling either. But Vietnam was a bad experience. But today's soldiers, I think, are treated much better. You know, uh, they, and they train well. They train well. Here, you take the selfie. Ready? What are you doing? <laughs> Hit that little button right there. Jesus. That yeah. one right there. Wait. There's the red one and the blue yeah. one. Take the white one. White one. I gotta take the white one. This is crazy. Like that? Yeah. Hit it again. <laughs> it didn't take. I did. I hit it. All right, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. It did something? I don't see how it did that. What, what difference is it? <laughs>